All right, we're recording. All right, JP, I'm super pumped for this little interview. Um, I was feeling the need to explain to people what it's like when you first start this business. And I feel like you're such a great example of like a way to just start, like bust through your fears and just start taking action and was just curious about like what that looks like for you. Hey Betsy, we're just getting started. Um, what that looks like for you and how um, people can take away some of, the, some of the tips that you found helpful when you first got started. So I wanted to explain, a lot of people that are newer don't really know my story either when I got started and all of that. So I was briefly gonna talk about um, when I got started and that was gosh like two and a half years ago now and I was pregnant with Declan Harley was I don't know however old she was and <laughs> um, I went to Angie's class so a lot of you guys by now know Angie Peter she's a presidential diamond um, and has started she's already hit gold on her second organization which is freaking phenomenally incredible um, but I attended her class and at the time, I believe she was a, a, just a one gold, not two golds at the time. And I remember seeing this, like, she did a PowerPoint. She, there was, like, gosh, probably 20 people at this class um, around my friend's, like, dining room table. And I remember thinking, like, I could totally do this. Like, PowerPoint, that's easy. I can learn about these oils. Um, and thinking that I could totally see myself in her position doing like working my own job, my own business, like she was doing. So it kind of planted that seed. Um, of course, learning about the oils was amazing. And then I, it was my first time hearing about doTERRA. So I didn't enroll that night. Um, but a couple months later, when Harley was teething, I like went to this store um, in our area that was, that sold doTERRA retail. And I bought a bottle of lavender and a bottle of breathe. And then the next, the very next couple days, I went back to Ange and I was like, all right, it's time. I need to buy a kit. And I got the Home Essentials kit. Um, but Ange was back in Canada at the time. She comes down this way um, in the winter, or in the, in the winters, yeah, because um, our in-laws have a place down here. But so I had her support, but from a distance. So it was up to me if I wanted to take action to take action. And I must have read through her like business opportunity um, guide like a hundred times and talked it over with my, with my husband uh, before I actually decided to dive into it. Cause I got the oils kind of knowing that I wanted to do the business side because of how inspiring she was and seeing her success. Um, so for me, when I start something new, it's really hard for me. Anytime I start like a new phase in my business, a new phase in my life, I'm such like a process oriented person that when something brand new comes along, JP, feel free to like grab the kids. <laughs> Don't feel bad about walking out. Um, that I have to have some sort of process to, to keep going. Um, let me put on speaker if you just for now. Okay. Um, so anytime I start something new, I like with starting this business, I watched like how to teach a class. I watched how to close a class. I watched all these different videos from all these incredible leaders on how to teach classes. And I literally wrote out a script for myself, used Angie's PowerPoint, made it into my own, um, and literally had a PowerPoint in the beginning, which I don't recommend at all anymore. Neither does Ange. Um, but for me, I saw it as easy because that's, I've just done them forever for school, for my job. So I didn't see it as some people might as an obstacle. I saw it as like, oh, that's really cool. I love to make pretty PowerPoints. Um, so I literally, while Andrew's in Canada, she's like, buy a class in a box. Good luck. Let me know how it goes. And I taught my class, but I overcame that fear of like public speaking, um, of starting a brand new business when I was like, I don't know, I was probably 35, 36, 37 weeks pregnant when I had my first class um, uh, with Teflon. And Harley was a new baby and I invited all my friends and family over and I had a PowerPoint up 
I even like went into kind of detail about the business side, which I don't really do anymore. I kind of just talk about like live, share, build during classes. And I probably really struggled through that class or like was reading off my paper for most of it. But what got me through that fear was first of all, like creating that little process for myself. And now we have so many duplicable resources, uh, but also figuring out why I really wanted to do it. So seeing that vision, because I was seeing people live it, like Ange and the other people in her community who created this time and financial freedom for themselves, really sitting down doing the math for the business opportunity side of things and seeing like, oh my gosh, this is real. And really having no idea at the time how much of a personal development journey it was going to be. I remember Ange saying like, oh yeah, in a year you'll be able to replace your income. It's been two and a half years, you guys, and by the end of this year is my goal to replace that income. But that's how much personal growth I've personally had to go through. And like, I know that it's all for a reason. And I know that every step of the way um, happens for a reason. And every piece of this journey is creating me into this person that I'm supposed to be this better version of myself. And to have complete faith in that journey and the I don't want to say like the hope for the future, but like appreciating with gratitude, like every step along the way um, has been a great way to keep persevering and remembering to enjoy every step along the way. Um, so basically like overcoming that fear for me was creating my own process, totally a process person and really digging deep and seeing that vision for my family and for the future and just going towards it every day. So how, <laughs> yay, she's here. How I can yeah, to show up every day. Is, yeah. We're just gonna make this totally real. I'm almost done, JP, and then I'm gonna ask you your questions. <laughs> so yeah. this is one of the cool things I learned just like a few days ago, but I wanted to share it with you guys. So every morning after my alarm, I will lay in bed for another like couple minutes. I'm not one to like press snooze. Usually just get up. Thanks to the Serenity soft gels. Those things are amazing. Um, but I will lay in bed for like two to three minutes and just imagining my dream life. And for me, that's like, I don't know. The first thing I always imagine is my kitchen and like I'm designing it in my head and I'm like redesigning the layout of my house in my head and like what floors would I pick out? And like being able to pay cash for a new Jeep for Patrick because like that's what he wants. Um, being able to send my kids to school without feeling like it's a whole other mortgage payment um, and struggling through that. Um, what will it feel like to see my back office hit like platinum and diamond and blue diamond, presidential diamond. And like walking through not only like the visual of some of these really cool things that are driving me, but also the feelings behind it. So like those times when you're like, man, I really don't feel like following up with three people today. Maybe that's not your flow for the day. Maybe you're meant to like, I don't know, send a sample or give a sample to a stranger on the street. Maybe that's your flow for the day. Who knows what it is, but it's making sure you're doing something that feels good to you for, for the day and kind of like getting through things like, like oil camp sometimes when I'm like, Oh, when am I going to be done adding up all these points? <laughs> like I did last night. I'm like I got to figure out how to do this like each day and just spend like two minutes a day instead of two hours at the end of oil camp, adding them all up. And sometimes you have to, to go through those um, less flowy times to get into more of the flow, which is what came out of oil camp, right? You guys each had people in oil camp and to hear their stories coming out of that was so cool. Like how cool that we were all a part of that. Um, so creating a vision, finding, having your why, having your own little process if that's your thing, maybe you're more of like a wing it person, totally cool too. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background about like when I started and then I had some questions for JP and maybe, and even Betsy, cause both of you were such like rock stars when you started this that it was like, I mean, it was, it was so cool to watch. It reminded me of myself um, when I was starting. So let's see. I'm going to scroll.
squish this so I can see my questions. What's up, baby? Yeah. We got some people on the wall. Say hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> All right, JP, tell us a little bit about yourself first and like what got you into doTERRA's business opportunity side of things or oils in general. Like, tell us who you are. Obviously, you got the little ones with you. Okay. Um, well, I'm Jessica Parker. Everybody calls me JP, though. Um, and this uh, beautiful lady that's interviewing me right now is actually uh, the reason that I started with doTERRA. Anna and I have been friends for like eight years now. And um, probably about a year before I started, I won a small bottle of wild orange from her. And that kind of got me a little bit interested in the oils. But at the time, I was really extremely busy with work and I was getting my master's degree and life and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I watched her and her community. And um, then I went to a little oil and makeup party and still thought about it, but still was like, ah, I got so much going on. And then I went over to her house another time and uh, tried to motivate. And that's when I was like, you know what? I think this is for me. So, um, like I said, I do have a master's degree in healthcare administration. Uh, conventional medicine is totally not for me. Uh, I don't want to be working in a hospital like I thought I did. I need to be, like, helping people on a more personal and yes hold on okay one second um and a, and a deeper level um so when i went to talk to anna we were you know talking about the oils and me getting a kit and i just knew right right there like i i was moving and i was like maybe i should wait and i was like you know what i don't want to wait there's no reason to wait um so i just decided to start and I am so glad I did um, you know kind of used it as a way to break out of my comfort zone I am a shy person until the ice is broken and then I could talk for probably longer than I should so uh, so yeah that's um, and just just like I said helping people on a more personal and deeper level is really what got me excited about the opportunity and there is literally so much to learn and learning really excites me so the fact that i can learn more every day and then share that with people it, i mean it, it 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 fuels me i love it love it that's awesome so like thinking back to when you first started i know i think the first class we did for you was an online like a facebook class but you did quite a few in-person classes before you moved to North Carolina. Um, so your hometown is Jupiter, and you were still living here when you started? Yep. Okay, and then um, we're going weeks. together. <laughs> so you had quite a few classes before you left. What was that like asking people to come to classes or asking people to host classes for you? And did, Was it scary at all when you were asking people? It was scary, and I think, like, my first planned out or what I hoped to be kind of like a class was going to be that girls' night that we were going to have at my mom's, mm -hmm. and every single person that said they were going to come totally dipped out, didn't come, and I was like, oh, I was, I was bummed. Mm -hmm. I was bummed, um, but I didn't let it get to me, and I just, you know, kept moving forward. And I just, I just think that like the fact that I can easily show people and tell people how I implement them on a day-to-day -day basis kind of sells itself and makes people want to learn more. Um, so as far as, you know, being, it's been a little difficult up here asking people to, you know, host classes, but I, I've done it anyway because I just feel like if I don't do it, I'm never going to do it. And once I do it, it feels good. And it's like, 
Ooh, I get like a little burst of like, I can do this. And, and every time you do it, it gets easier and you get more comfortable. And eventually there might be a day where I'm not scared, but that kind of scares me because I feel like fear is like what pushes me also. <laughs> so I don't necessarily not want to be scared because then it might be boring. Yeah, I know, right? And it's also kind of switching from that mindset of like, oh, I don't want to sell things to the mindset of serving. And like, I've, you guys have probably heard me say this before, but I kind of forget the fact that people don't understand why they need oils or why they need to come to a class um, because I know how valuable they are. Yes. I, I sometimes have to rein myself back in and be like, okay, I have to you know, start with sampling and telling people why don't hear it and all that stuff before I'm like, Hey, <laughs> buy some oils. So it's like remembering that part of it too. But I think it's brand heavy who introduced this concept to me is when you come from that, like heart of serving versus heart of like a mindset of selling, then it really shifts your perspective on like being okay with reaching out to people or offering samples to someone like, I don't know, maybe you think that if I offer a sample to someone, they're thinking I'm trying to sell them something. Like, I have that block a lot. Yeah. And then you think, well, why wouldn't they want to buy something from me versus, like, the grocery store? And I, you know, like, why wouldn't you want to help support small businesses? So, and yourself. Yeah. By, by gifting yourself these awesome tools. Yeah, exactly. So um, how did you ask someone to host? Like you had Kara host that one at her shop. Yes, we did. And it it was, it was a make and take uh, class. And I felt like that was a good way for me to get started because it's fun and you can still totally do, you know, a EO 101 with the make and take. Um, so that was kind of like an icebreaker for me, um, since it was kind of my first real class and, you know, she has that beautiful space. So that was kind of easy to ask her to host. Um, I'm, I'm thinking uh, the other class that we did when I was home was the yoga. And I just think that yoga and oils is like the most perfect combination so that was also a pretty easy one for me to, but also, you know, Denise was very excited about it as well. Yeah. Um, so it helps if the other person is excited because then you, you know, you can share their excitement and what you're going to share with them. Um, but as far as asking, you know, new people that I, that I don't know to host, um, you know, I just say that I would like to share with them how I, um, implement essential oils into my daily life. And I've had a couple, um, you know, pregnant friends up here. So if I feel like mentioning the fact that, you know, they really helped me through my pregnancy or labor and delivery, stuff like that, I always try to throw like a personal touch into whoever I'm speaking to. So, you know, if I'm talking to, you know, like an elderly person that might need aroma touch for swollen feet, I'm not going to talk to them about oils for pregnancy, you know? So I always try to, um, you know, just, just know my personal experiences and, and what I know and use that in asking people to host. So kind of going to repeat back like a version of what you just said. So when you started you had your mom, which at her house, it didn't end up working out, but you had a good friend who was already enrolled, was the class for you. And yes. you knew this um, woman who teaches yoga and she was totally into it. So everything that you're saying, I've like been obsessed with this word flow lately, right? Because I'm something I'm totally struggling with, but everything that you said just now is something that you felt comfortable people you felt comfortable reaching out to in the very beginning. And I think that's like so key because your, your friends, your family, um, your yoga instructor you've known forever, um, are all uh, in the beginning or I mean, always are so excited to see you start 
your own business and they want to help you. They want to see you succeed. So it's almost like in the beginning, it's, you really want to work with those people who are like, heck yeah, give me some free oil and I'll yeah. have some people over for you or do a, invite some people to your Facebook class for you. I feel like, and then from there, it's booking classes, some classes thing, right? Um, and going from there. So I'm creating that momentum for yourself. So I just wanted to point out that you're totally coming from like a place of flow when you started there. And then you moved up to North Carolina and you don't oh, have yeah. to live in totally Netflix. broke the flow. <laughs> so I know um, a lot of us are curious about how you're just like meeting people or what you're doing up there to start creating your own network. So um, since I am a mom and I have this, these two lovely ladies <laughs> over here I'm with all day, every day. Um, I joined a couple moms groups and, um, I, you know, I, I definitely didn't want to start. Oh, I just got spit up on, um, <laughs> I'm like, I definitely do this towel that's on my desk. I'm like, <laughs> here. I definitely didn't want like my first encounter with the moms to be like, Hey, you want to buy some oil? You know? So I've really, um, I'm, I'm growing, I would say organically because I'm trying to find lasting relationships. <laughs> um, so I was approached by a mom at a gymnastics class and she's now like probably my best new friend up here. Um, so, but I'm just now to the point where I'm comfortable with after she has the baby, I'll probably be like, Hey, I know you keep talking about wanting to learn about the oils. You know, we should have a, you know, a class at your house one day. Um, so definitely, um, you know, trying to, trying to reach people organically. Um, I've also done through family, some stuff at my house. Um, and, and I've just basically had open houses, like just open my house up and said, you know, I'm going to be doing this today. If you want to come by, I'm going to be here. And one, I had nobody show up total dud, but that's okay. Um, and I've had a couple people, um, come and, and really enjoy it. Um, use the husband excuse. But I still follow up with them and I'm, you know, I'm still confident that they, they will realize what's going on. So I make sure that I invite, um, you know, everybody on Facebook to my community because then they can see, you know, what was really going on mm -hmm. um, with, with the oils and stuff. Um, so definitely, uh, social media is a good one because I kind of like look out for events that are going on and I'm like, Oh, that sounds like there might be somebody that might need some samples there. Like this weekend, I'm going to a healthy North Carolina summer event and there's like Zumba classes and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm be armed with peppermint oil and you know, my, I finally got some cards made, some business cards. Um, so Opening up outside of the box, outside of what I would normally do, it, it just has to happen. And that, that's what I've had to do, um, you know, up here. And, and obviously hitting up places where I can go as a mom because I drag the girls. And, oh, that's not, okay. And my most recent thing, um, I've been emailing actually some yoga studios and some different businesses about doing workshops. Um, so I've gotten a couple of responses on that and I, um, I'm going to try to get some lunch and learns going up here with, um, with a bank somebody referred me to. So just thinking outside the box basically, um, because some days I have to sit home, but I don't want to lose the momentum. So I have to find something to keep it going. And Betsy, I know you've kind of been doing the same thing, reaching out. You're in a whole new area where you, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I would love to hear about how that's going. And can you talk a little bit about what you've been doing in your new, in your new area to create that network and reach out to people? 
Yeah, it's going good. Um, so I told Anna last week, I sent my official chiropractor and midwife last email out to all the local businesses. I've got a couple back with um, some positive responses. They might be interested in hosting classes. So that's kind of my, um, the way I want to get into having them host a class for me. And um, I just created a natural moms group here because there didn't exist one, but I know there's natural moms here. So I'm posting on the different places. So even though I might not be like out or I might be um, at the grocery store or whatever, I'm doing something every day to keep going and make new connections. Um, so I'm posting about that group and a couple people have joined. I think there's about 10 people who have joined. And so I'm just starting to introduce myself and be like, I'm a holistic nutritionist and essential oil educator and just sort of position myself as a place to bring knowledge into this area. Um, so that's kind of my, that's we've met a couple genius. people at the school and there's like, there's a lot of community events. Um, like we met a really cool lady and she, um, she already does essential oils and she just had a baby. So I'm going to send her some balance because she's really struggling with her, the postpartum recovery. She told me, so I was like, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll send you something your way. Cause I remember Anna sent me that and it just, it really, um, I don't know. There's something about the gifting and serving that really speaks to people about doTERRA. And I really, I feel like that's where I want to come across rather than like you guys are saying, rather than selling, having this knowledge and these tools to be able to benefit people's lives. So that's going to be, because there's a lot of crunchy mamas around here. There's like, a I love that place. idea. That's yeah. such a good idea. Yeah. I might even try to do that here. You should. You should. So, I, I feel like I haven't done one yet. So I'm still testing the theory, but I feel like it's a really good um, opportunity because people who are training already for yoga and chiropractors, they already care about their health. So yeah. they are looking to invest, they might be looking to invest deeper. So we've only been here for three weeks. So I'm still, I'm still trying to work work things out and make connections. Go, girl. My thing is every day I'm going to make a new connection and make a new connection, just even small, like, Hey, my name's Betsy. I just moved here. So I've been emailing. And my next one was I've been working. Um, I had a clan on Monday. And she was so she asked me um, what essential oils like could support her. So I was like, Oh, that would be perfect to work the social media side while I don't know a ton of people here yet. So I'm kind of like combining the two to keep momentum going every day, even if I don't have a sale that day or I don't have an enroller. But um, the sampling has been awesome because I sent samples to a friend three months ago and she finally placed an order yesterday. And she was like, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I'm so grateful. I've been smelling the empty bottles. And it's, so it's like you sow the seeds and they'll grow. Yeah. Into them. So that's been kind of my, that's, I'm just keeping my why in focus and doing, um, just being here for each, just each call. It's just, it's motivating and it keeps the why present and just the, the flow going. And I feel like that you were right. That's really important. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. So this last question, if you have another minute for both of you, I think this would be, I mean, we all struggle with this as moms, but like, my question, I kind of worded it like this when I said it to JP, it's both of you, you, you work from home yet you always find the time or make the time to connect like in your own community groups and on these types of calls, like you two are so consistent. Um, so, and there's so, there's also so much information out there within these groups. So how do you, like, do you have any tips to not let it overwhelm you? but also like to remain present and in tune with like what your community needs, what maybe some of your leaders need. Um, I don't know, maybe without the risk of being like, here's my schedule and here's how I keep like my kids entertained while I'm doing this. Or maybe that is how you want to answer, but I don't know, maybe some, maybe some tips for some of us who are struggling with like trying to figure it all out and finding time to do doTERRA. Hey, Inslee, down there in the chat box. I'm glad you're on. <laughs> uh, so I, I wrote a couple things down, actually, um, in response to this question. And I think truly that um, I, I live it every single day. 
And so my community consists of a lot of moms and people um, like-minded people or people that need like simple, easy ways to use them. So basically I just pretty much throw out whatever I'm doing that day um, or living that day. Sometimes I'll like take a picture and like, Oh, I'm going to use that down the road. But I, you know, as far as my community goes, I pretty much just put out there what's like on my heart that day. Um, and there, we have so many amazing leader groups. Like it's, it's insane. <laughs> it is. I, I truly cannot keep up with them. Um, but they, for me not to let it overwhelm me since I do pretty much get notifications from all of them. Um, I I'll save them on Facebook. The ones that really speak to me that way when I'm, when I have a minute to focus or when I'm working on planning something or I want to research something, I can go back and I know exactly where to find it. Um, so like organization, probably number one. And, um, I, I write things down. I throw a lot of paper away. I crumble it up, but I find that if I'm like thinking about something or I think I want to ask somebody something or see, you know, one of the leader groups, I'll write it down that way I can go back to it. And you know, that weird feeling in my brain that I missed something isn't there. Yeah. That save function on Facebook is amazing. It's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah. So like whenever, Facebook. like wacky, I know, but I'm breastfeeding. So like whenever I know I'm going to sit down to feed the baby, I'll go to what I've saved on Facebook. Exactly. Sometimes that's when I feel like I can write the best. Um, and I also wake up at five o'clock in the morning every day um, to get like some me time. Um, all right. Sometimes it's like five thirty, but yeah, I um, texted you at like six the other day, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure she's up. <laughs> yeah. So just you know, like I mean, truly, I actually posted this on Facebook yesterday. Like, you find time for what you want to make time for, and the people that I'm trying to reach are important to me. So I make time for them. Yeah. And not to mention, like you have, uh, you work another job from home with your girl. Yeah. So like, you're amazing. And then Betsy is a homeschooling mom of four. One of yeah, them is, like, a new girl. baby. So maybe Betsy can kind of jump in with some tips there too. So I'm a list person too. I have two notebooks, one for my holistic nutrition business and then one for doTERRA. So whenever I have a DR, it's just a regular like line notebook. I'll just write it down. Me and my husband were joking the other night about how I have like lists and lists for my lists. And but it's like when you're busy, I've got to write it down or I won't remember it. And I, I send videos. I send videos to myself like through Facebook Messenger if I want to watch it. So I'll check my own messages to myself for, for if I think it's important or just make a little note. Um, but yeah, I check in with the community that I am like my natural moms community just every day because I feel like it comes from a heart of serving and that's, I feel like that's what I want to make a difference. And, but I also want to do the business side of it too. I want to make a difference in my family. So I just, I make the time, I make the time at night or, oh, I was doing a silver mastery class yesterday and they said, do it in 15 minute increments. It's great. I love it. And it was, it was such a good piece. Everybody's got 15 minutes throughout the day, 15 minutes here where you're sitting down or 15 minutes here where you're putting the kids to bed. So instead of blocking off a whole hour, if you don't have that, block off 15 minutes to reconnect with this person or make this post. So that's, that's my goal. Oh my gosh, I love that. And you're doing the silver, whatever it's called, the silver mastery? Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited that you're doing that. I wasn't sure if anyone came up for it. Um, very cool. I love this, you guys. I so appreciate you taking the time. I have one more thing that I wrote down. Let's hear it. That I wanted to share. Okay. So, you know, because I work through fear on my own um, every day, um, and I was sitting there thinking this morning, like, okay, what happens if I'm told no or I'm rejected? Because that's, like, one of my biggest fears is rejection. But like, no matter what, I still get to come home to Andrew and the girls and I still have my family and my friends. So when thinking about like all the things that 
could go wrong or, you know, getting told no, I think it's important to think about like what you still have, even if you get told no, like just because you get one no doesn't mean that they're all going to be no or that even the next person is going to be no. So just, you know, remembering that like rejection isn't physically painful and you, you still have what you had before you went. You're not, you're not losing anything by trying. Yeah, that's so true. And I, someone else, I've heard that people take it even a little bit farther than that and be like, well, okay, so what happens if I can't pay my mortgage? Okay, I'll eventually lose my house. Maybe I'll have to move back in with my parents. Maybe I'll have to like find a different job. Um, or maybe I'll have to move in with like my sister. But worst case scenario, if you lose your house, like you have someone to move in with, you know? Like yeah, I have my camper. You walk through that worst case scenario and you realize like, oh, it's actually going to be okay no matter what happens. <laughs> so I love that you mentioned that, JP. Really, really awesome. Um, any last tidbits to add, Betsy? Maybe any fears you've had to overcome so far? I guess I've just had to work through fears of, uh, you know, making new connections and getting told no the same. I mean, I feel like we all have the same, the same fears and, you know, the same time management. It's, it's everybody feels the same. So you yeah. just got to work through it. And I feel like it's really good for personal development. It's really good. It's yeah. important. And that self-care is, is important on top of that. Love it. So true with the self-care. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we have just a couple minutes left, so I'm just going to not keep this too long. So I feel like I avoid watching things that are like over 30 minutes long. <laughs> so thanks you guys so much for being on live. I so appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your wonderful knowledge. And if anyone watching this replay has any questions, you know where to find us. Feel free to reach out with any questions or comment or whatever it may be. Um, and I'll post this in the group. Thanks, you guys. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. All right.